Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here today. I want to thank the event organizers, the wonderful MC. She's perfectly bilingual, as well as the wonderful event organizers who put this event together. I'm very honored to be here. Before I came here, this is my first time at the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, or DAV. I did a little bit of research online, and this is what I found. DAV was founded in 1959. So that's about 63 years this year would be its anniversary. And it's based upon the principle of a public research university to help nurture and raise the future diplomats, leaders, civil servants, and business executives of Vietnam. And I firmly believe as a fellow Korean who grew up in America as an Asian American that we need to actively invest into the people here today, into the youth. We need to invest our time, our energy, our resources, mentorship, ideas, collaboration, so that we can have a better and brighter future. So on this idea of outside in, in order for us to receive message and experience from the outside, first, we must look from the inside, inside of our minds, inside of our hearts, and we must be willing to open it up and receive the message so that we can grow as individuals. So today's message I have is on this topic of perseverance is the pathway to success. Perseverance. What is perseverance? Perseverance means I will never quit. When times get hard, when I start sweating, I start suffering, I face some kind of challenge or obstacle, I want to give up, I want to quit, but you have to persevere. And I thought it would be very appropriate for this specific institution, DAV, because all of you are learning about diplomacy. Whether you want to work in foreign service, whether you want to major in international relations and go into diplomacy, all of you will go into the world when you graduate and contribute to society in a public or in a private fashion. And in doing so, we all need to understand diplomacy. In order to accomplish diplomacy, we need to be perseverant. So as I explained to you, these are what we call the eight steps to success. And the most important step in my life experience, I have been in Asia for about 12 years now. I spent most of my time in China, in Shanghai and Beijing. I spent time in Seoul, in South Korea, as well as now for the past three and a half years, I've spent time in Vietnam and Thailand. And from many, many successful people, from many executives, from individuals in public service, I've had many conversations and the common theme of success is on this topic of perseverance. I wanna to explain to all of you through my own personal journey of many failures and setbacks and challenges. And I hope through my personal story of perseverance, of never quitting, that you will draw some inspiration and be able to apply this principle of perseverance in your own life, here today, tomorrow, and for the future. Perseverance is more than just, I will never quit. Perseverance is hard work. Every single morning, I wake up at 4 a.m. I wake up at 4 a.m. to begin my day because I know that if I want to be a good leader, I need to lead by my own example. I need to be the hardest worker in the room. And by being the hardest worker in the room, I can inspire other people to follow in my footsteps. And that is what it means to be a leader who leads by example. You also need to be patient. Patience is a virtue that we may not all have, but it is absolutely something that we can work on and practice every single day to be more patient. So here are some photos of me. When I was young, very young, I was actually born in Korea. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and I immigrated to the United States at the age of five. You can see here, I have an older brother. His name is Sam or Samuel. So Sam studied very hard in America, 
and went to MIT. My brother majored in material science and mechanical engineering and also has a very deep passion in bioengineering. And he did his undergraduate and master's degree at MIT. When I was in high school, I did particularly well. As one of two Asian students in my entire high school, my brother and I were a minority, which meant that every single day we went to class, we were the only two Asians in our entire school of thousands of students. So every day we dealt with racism and discrimination. We had bullying. Kids told us to go back to China. And I said, I'm from Korea. So these are some of the challenges I faced when I was a very young kid who immigrated to America. And I remember every single day, I had to remind myself to keep going, to never quit, to persevere. A lot of people ask me and they say, Danny, why did you choose to go to West Point? West Point is also known as the United States Military Academy. Just like this institution was founded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam, West Point was founded in 1802, over 200 years ago, by founding fathers, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, as an institution that would graduate leaders of character. Upon graduation, every single student, every single graduate has to serve in the US Army for five years of active duty. So when I entered into West Point, I was a senior grade 12 student in high school and 9-11 happened. 9 -11, maybe some of you were not even born then in 2001. I was 17 years old when America was under attack and the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers collapsed. In that moment of pure chaos and terror, I made the decision to serve my country to go to West Point. Now, my journey at West Point is not a very perfect, a rosy, a beautiful one. As a matter of fact, my journey at West Point, I faced so many challenges along the way. When all of you graduate from DAV and all of you go out into the world, you will face challenges. You will face people who will be against you. When you are in diplomacy, trying to build relationships with other countries and foreign nations, and everybody has their own agenda, their agenda seems to be more important than your agenda. You have to find common ground. You have to find the meeting point where two parties, two countries can come together in a peaceful resolution because war should never be the resolution. My very first failure was when I joined West Point, I was recruited for the boxing team, boxing. When I was in high school, I was a black belt. I was very good in athletics. I played a lot of sports and I was recruited for the boxing team at West Point. But upon the first day of practice, I arrived and my sparring partner was this gentleman right here on the photo. His name was Fast Finger Freddy. Fast Finger Freddy was also a Korean American. He is three years older than me at the time. And this guy is a national champion in boxing, Golden Glove champion. Every single day at practice, every time I would try to punch him once, he would punch me in the face 20 times. I would get bloody noses, I would have headaches. And eventually the coaches came up to me and they said, hey, you're not fast enough. Your nickname will never be Fast Finger Danny. And so, you no longer have a spot on the boxing team. My first major setback. My second setback was, well, if I'm not good enough or fast enough to be on the boxing team at West Point, maybe I could try out for another sport. I love sports. Every cadet at West Point, every student has to play some kind of sport. So I tried out for the Army crew team. As you can see here in this photo, crew is rowing. It's when people get into a boat and you work together and you have to pull and you have to pull and you have to move across the water as fast as you can. The tryouts for the army crew team were about 10 hours long, almost half a day. We did all sorts of challenges from physical challenges to examinations, to interviews. At the end of the tryouts, the coach came out, looked at all the students trying out. And she said, if you are not 
185 centimeters. I'm not 185 centimeters. You are not tall enough to be on the crew team, and therefore, you have no chance. This was the first time in my life that I failed in something, not because I wasn't smart enough or good enough, but simply because I wasn't tall enough. And so I faced my second major failure at West Point. Now, around this time, as we always do when we face challenges, we call the people who matter to us most. I picked up my phone and I called my mom. My mom is in Georgia at the time. I'm in New York State at the time. It's a very long distance away. And I called my mom. I'm in tears. <laughs> mom, I failed for the second time. And I told my mom and I said, Mom, I'm ready to pack up my bags. I'm ready to come back home. I don't think I'm good enough to be at West Point. And my mom said, son, I did not raise someone who is a loser. I did not raise someone who is a quitter. I want you to go back out there and I guarantee you, you will find your purpose by persevering, never quit. So the third thing I did was I tried out for class president. Now you have to know when I was in high school, I was class president for four years. From ninth grade to 12th grade, I was the leader in my school of thousands of students. So leadership for me was quite natural. It was something I experienced at a very early age. And I was very confident that at West Point, I could be the class president. I wrote this beautiful speech. I rehearsed it 100 times. I stood in front of 1,200 classmates. I delivered this speech, it was perfect. And then I didn't get elected class president. As a matter of fact, there was another student who was elected class president. And yet this was the third major setback in a course of maybe two months, two months. In two months, I did not fail only once. I did not fail only twice, but I failed three major times. Now, most people, when they face one setback, they would feel really sorry for themselves, put themselves down, have a lot of self-confidence issues, and just give up, right? We as human beings have this automatic response of fight or flight. And generally, most people want to flight. Take the easy way. Why go through hardship and adversity when I can exit the easy way? My fourth and final attempt at doing something meaningful, I thought to myself, I said, wouldn't it be great if every single day after class at West Point, I could climb into a helicopter, go up to about 5,000 meters in altitude, and jump out of an airplane falling about 200 kilometers per hour. This is called the Army Parachute Team. Every year, in your first year in college, they only select 10 students on the team. In my year, we had over 300 students trying out. I had two roommates at the time. I looked at my roommates and I said, hey guys, I wanna try out for the parachute team. And both of my roommates said, ha, don't even bother. There's no chance you out of 300 will be selected. Don't even bother trying out. You're not gonna be good enough. You've never jumped out of an airplane before and you surely don't have the courage to do so. Against their advice, against my own self-doubt with three major setbacks, I made the decision to try out for the Army Parachute Team. And after a very long tryout, consisting of physical challenges and interviews and many, many things that I had to overcome, I was one of 10 selected to be on the West Point Parachute Team. As a matter of fact, today, I have jumped out of helicopters and airplanes over 1,000 times. If any of you want advice about skydiving, feel free to ask me. Why is perseverance important? Perseverance begins with personal development. Just like the theme of this TEDx of outside in, 
I explained at the beginning that in order to bring perspectives from the outside and experiences from the outside, it begins from here. As we open up our hearts and we open up our minds. If we can persevere, it allows us to grow, to innovate, to change, to be better. These are proven characteristics of what happens when you persevere. You develop your character. You develop your self-confidence. You develop resilience, which basically means that I will never quit. You develop trustworthiness. People are willing to trust people who don't give up. I'm willing to follow someone who is always going the extra mile to better themselves. And finally, it increases motivation for yourself and it increases motivations for those around you. Why is perseverance important? Right now, I am a founder and CEO of an education technology company based in Singapore with operations in Vietnam in both Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, in Bangkok, Thailand, as well as in Korea. We have about 300 full-time team members and on a regular basis, I meet and interview individuals who are passionate about education, passionate about instilling confidence in the youth to better build for the future. And on a regular basis, rather than looking at a CV or a resume, I look into their eyes and I ask this question through the interview, through the conversation and say, tell me the most challenging experience you've ever had in your life, whether it's personal, whether it's professional, tell me. And more important than telling me, how did you overcome those challenges? How did you overcome adversity? How did you persevere and build towards your own success? And I can tell you, most people quickly talk about Oh, I had to study very hard for an examination. Oh yeah, it's for school. I had to organize this very big project and it was very stressful. I had to work with many classmates. And so the stories seem to be quite similar and there isn't enough of a real challenge that we face, especially when we're younger, especially when we're still studying. But I want to challenge each and every one of you to think about how can you put yourself through fire? How can you put yourself through the most intense experiences now, today, so that you can build and become the strongest steel because the strongest steel is forged in the hottest fire? I'll give you an example. This time next year, in February of 2023, I will be going with about eight other friends. These friends also work with me in Point Avenue and they're all educators and teachers and mentors. And we will be running 102 kilometers running, not driving, but we're running 102 kilometers in the mountains, in the woods, on the beach. Why? Because we can because we have legs, we have lungs, and we have the ability to build a perseverant mindset. And in doing so, we become leaders that others want to follow. We become leaders who lead with character, who lead with perseverance. There are very clear steps in terms of how to do it. How can you build perseverance? Number one, is make an active decision to make drastic change in your life. So for example, most college students, we all go to sleep very late, maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and we have a tendency to wake up very late, unless of course we have class at seven in the morning. Imagine changing your lifestyle where you wake up like I do at 4 a.m. every single morning. At 4 a.m. every single morning, majority of the people on this earth are still sleeping in their bed. At 4 a.m. every single morning by waking up and spending that personal time of solitude, you can build a very clear vision of what you hope to accomplish in your life. By building a very clear vision, then you can work towards 
coming up with solutions, coming up with goals and milestones and things along the way that you want to accomplish. After all, we are the sum of our life experiences, which means that the more we push ourselves outside of our comfort zone, the more that we are willing to do what others don't do, the more we grow and the more we become perseverant. I want to conclude with this quote by Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, who himself was also a wonderful diplomat. He had to serve during a very difficult time when America was divided. It was called the American Civil War with the North and the South. And he says, you cannot fail if you resolutely determine that you will not fail. Thank you very much.